Hi there, welcome to episode seven of Handmade House TV. I'm Noah Bradley. Stay tuned. On today's Handmade House TV, I thought we would discuss foundations a bit. Uh, in particular, a pier foundation. And um, here I'm at a, a vintage log cabin, and actually this is, this is fairly rare for me to encounter an old log cabin that has a stone pier foundation. And that's the fact that a lot of times pier foundations wouldn't survive. A lot of times uh, it, an, a pier foundation is an indication of a poorly built home and that uh, the poorly built homes generally didn't survive. Generally, people of, of, of the ages past would take great care in building a foundation, and that would be uh, an indicator of the quality of the work that they would put afterwards. But in this particular home, it was built on stone piers, and the cabin is absolutely beautiful. Uh, it's one of my favorites. We did a restoration of this one 25 years ago. Uh, she stands up really well, and so it is a testament to the fact that if you do stone piers and you build them correctly so that they don't survive and that we don't get an earthquake that shakes them off of the, of the foundation, that a pier foundation can work long term. Uh, to me, it's uh, one of the indications is if you, if you look closer, and maybe I'll move the camera up later, to some of the piers, is, is they are not works of art. They are pretty darn primitive. Uh, one of the things I can point out is that, that most of the piers on the cabin uh, tend to flare. Uh, they're wider at the base and they go up narrower. I've seen some log cabin experts today that, that will try to do a primitive little cabin and they take little, little rocks uh, the size of a shoe box and stack them up in a long column uh, that just doesn't look, it doesn't look very functional. I'm surprised they got them to balance at all. And the cabin to me, if it even gets a minimal rocking at all, a little bit of movement, uh, the cabin's surely gonna come down. And you know, part of, part of building anything is the aesthetics of it. And if, if you were to build anything that's, that's straight, same dimension at the bottom and the top, it starts to actually look like the bottom is narrower. And if you, if you were to visit ancient uh, Greece or, or, or Rome, you'll find out that the columns that look the same from bottom, top to bottom are actually, uh, they tend to, to pad the difference so that visually it looks like it's a straight column. Um, and uh, but uh, anyway, I wanted to point out to you that it's not only a question of aesthetics that makes a home more attractive. You do a solid foundation on it, but it's and 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 it's also not durability. The fact that it will survive longer and um, and, and uh, be more appreciated and, and survive more. But also there are there are negatives to to a pier foundation. And one of them is, if you look close enough over here, you can see that stuff has been thrown underneath it. And it, it never fails that it's such an alluring spot that anytime I go to someone's house, they end up throwing stuff underneath it. Here in this particular thing is a pile of lumber. I've seen people put their lawn mowers under there, their garden hose, extra building supplies, uh, wheelbarrows, you name it. So whenever you have a space like this, it tends to draw clutter uh, and uh, it becomes unsightly uh, in no time at all, which means if, it's un if your bottom of your house is unsightly, your entire house looks trashy. So that's not a good thing. Also, nothing lives for long underneath a house. So it soon becomes dirt and just dry dirt. It means that when water flows from the outside into your house during a heavy rainstorm underneath there, it'll start washing it out and you're gonna to have to do something in order to prevent that. And I don't know if the camera can reveal it here, but there's definitely some major washing out going underneath the particular structure. It also uh, tends to be uh, quite the hangout for, for animals. And I'm a big fan of putting a front porch with piers. I think that it's very attractive. I, I prefer a porch with piers and not a solid foundation. It, it looks better. And also, it'll give you a place where if you need a place for your dog to cool off on, on, on hot days, it's a great thing. But you don't need to put your entire house underneath it. 
But the, the, the most important thing of all of those characteristics, the shortcomings of a peer foundation, is the, is the fact of, of you, it's cold. Um, your floors are always cold. And if your floor is cold, your, it means your feet are cold. And if your feet are cold, you are never comfortable within a home. And, and that alone is, is worth it. Uh, you'll save on your electric bill, your heating bill. Uh, I, I made the mistake, I, I shared it in a, well, I shared it if you go to the Handmade House uh, Academy site sign up page and everything else, I shared 12 keys there. And in that, I think I shared, was when I shared the story of the biggest mistake I made in building a home. That was the major learning curve. We learn a lot from our mistakes. The home that I built in Tennessee that I regretted building when I got done, that I was so disappointed with it, that it I built it on a stone pier foundation. And I did it because I needed to get in the house and I didn't know better. I didn't have anyone like me telling you, don't do that. So I'm telling you, uh, don't do that. And literally, even after putting the floor system up like this, I insulated the floor and I put up protective layer that would protect the insulation layer. So there was an insulated barrier between my feet and the outside, just like there's an insulated barrier in the walls, just like it is in the ceiling. It was a sealed cocoon, but it was up off the ground. The wind whipped underneath it. It was cold underneath it. One night I went to bed and I left a glass of water on the floor and the next morning my water was frozen, frozen solid. And it wasn't, the room was, you know, it was probably in the 60s that night with a, with a wood stove going. We had plenty of heat, but nonetheless, the floor was so cold that it froze a glass of water on it. And the same thing with here. This is a, this is a weekend cabin I built for, for a wonderful family and they, they don't use it anymore. And I think that one of the reasons they don't use it is because it is not comfortable. And, and the only way to try to get those floors comfortable is to come in underneath and insulate it. And if you just put insulation underneath there, that's a wonderful nesting area. It's exposed to the moisture of the outside temp weather and it will get heavy and it'll fall off and you'll end up doing a routine maintenance of doing it. If, if then afterwards what we did is we came in and put, put plywood, uh, after we put insulation, to put plywood underneath it to, to protect the insulation and to make it more uh, uh, um, airproof so that air wasn't circulated within the insulation. And what that did was it created a tempting environment for every four-legged mammal known to man who, who knew that there was a warm space on the other side of that plywood and all he'd have to do is dig a little hole to get into it. And so at nighttime when you're staying in the house, it never fails that one of those four-legged creatures decides at one or two o'clock in the morning that they want to start gnawing a hole and, and getting in there for the winter time. And it's not that pleasant to go out and discover what kind of animal might be chewing on your home at that hour and to drive them away only to find them come back a half hour to hour later and, and resume their activities. So, so please, 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 when you build your home, the, the joy in a home is not only in the finished product, but it's also in the process of doing it. And many people that start building their home start with the idea of only focusing on the finished project and they want to get there as fast as they can. They want to make it as cost effective as they can. And so they want to race past the foundation stage of a home. Don't do that. Savor the foundation. Make the foundation as precious as you can. Love the moment of doing your foundation work. It's actually a fairly inexpensive time. It just takes time. It takes your time. And if you will do it, you will, you will love the process of hand building a perfect foundation. And it's one of the, for me, when I build houses, it's one of the most joyous times in the world, building the foundation. It's quiet, there's no saws going on, no hammering going on. Uh, your budget, you've got plenty of money in your budget to build a home ahead. You're not, you're not in any hurry, you're savoring your property. It's an exciting period of your life to be building your future home. 
uh, and and you're building the foundation. I mean, that's a huge thing. A lot of a lot of ministries start and focus on the foundation. So focus on your foundation and do it correctly. Don't don't hurry past it with 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 peers, and suffer the consequences in the future. And, uh, uh, I see a lot of people um, do it, and, the, and the, the, their response is, I'll take care of it in the future. I'll, I'll, once I get the house finished and I get in it and everything else, then I'll come back and do it. And I never see that happen. Doing a foundation after you finish your home is, is awful. It's a whole lot harder to do. And if you, can't, if you don't have the time, you don't have the expenses to do it right, when it's time to do it right, what makes you think that anything's gonna change in the future? So my words for you today is, is build yourself the best foundation for your home you possibly can. Stay away from peer, a peer foundation on your home, except for on that front porch and let that dog have a place to sleep. So that, that's it for today on, on Handmade House TV. Thank you for joining in episode seven. You're gonna enjoy next week's episode. I hope you'll see you on Wednesday. I'd like to thank four more people for signing up for the Handmade House Academy. Mike Permenter, Maury Hohen, Daniel Jones, Andrew Brown, and Tom Wilmaski. And I probably botched every one of your names and I am so sorry for that. <laughs> But uh, I do thank you so much for joining in the Academy and the kind words you've shared back with me on all of the value you've gotten from it. If, if, uh, if you haven't signed up for the Academy, please go to the Handmade House Academy site and, and check us out. We've got a wonderful free video there for you with a, sh with a cheat sheet that you can download that will help you get the perfect home of your dreams and not end up with something that you regret. So that's it for this episode. I thank you so much for enjoying it. Look forward to next time. Bye now.